When it comes to preparing for any disaster type situation, emergency, food and water should be our top priority. But right behind that is a way to power different appliances, alternative energy. And in today's video, I want to talk about some of the different options we have, as well as some of the solar options and what I'm going to be doing with my DIY setup in the future to be able to expand on some of these things. So I want to go through these from the smallest to the largest and even uh, some other things that you can do. So let's go ahead and start with the very smallest ones. And these are the little battery packs that you can get on Amazon that are, you know, 20, 30 bucks. This one is actually 30 watts and a little bit bigger than some of the other cheaper ones. Now you have to be careful on Amazon because some of these, this one states that it's 40,000 milliamp hours. And when I did my testing, I got about half of that. So just be careful about what they state and what it's actually going to be. And towards the end, I'll show you a cool trick on how to figure out exactly what energy you have in these different power packs and how much you're going to be able to draw. But along this, like I said, there's a bunch of different kinds of these. You even got ones, the smaller ones with the solar panels. This one has actually got four solar panels on it. And I've tested this out and in an eight hour day, you can get about a, about close to half of the energy. If this is completely drained, it, it's about between a third and a half of the energy with this just pointed in the sun. So this works pretty well. Some of them, are just the one solar panel on here and they don't work that great, especially the cheaper ones, but it will give you emergency energy. This one states that it is 2,500 milliamp hours. And again, it was about half. It really depends on how much you're drawing, but again, it was about half. And what's cool with these is you could actually, if you have one of these charged up, you could take, a little battery charger right here. So if you've got double A's, triple A's that you need to recharge, you could take one of these battery chargers right here, you plug it in and it will turn on. And then if you've got these little rechargeable double A's, triple A's, I've got 18650s that also, uh, that I have for my headlamp that work, but you can plug that in right there and it will transfer that energy from this small solar charger to your batteries for your flashlights for other things so these are good for charging cell phones for charging smaller electronics but they're not really good for powering anything and that's where these larger ones come in with the ac ports so with these larger ones or the the medium sized ones i suppose i'll pull this out of the way i've got a couple right here that are 300 watts and this one is a lot slimmer than this one right here, but this one will only go up to, it, it. the capacity is 300 watts, the output is 300 watts. On this Blue Eddy right here, the capacity is 300 watts, but the output is 600 watts. I've done a review on this one and tested this out, and it is pretty cool because you can power a lot of things as long as they're under 300 watts. A ham radio rig, depending on you know what your setup is, you could probably do that. This is great for, it's nice and portable. You can take it camping. Uh, you could put it on a backpack. Just a lot of different things that you can do with this. You can even just set it. It looks nice and neat when you set it on the kitchen table. And, you know, people need to plug, you, you plug a laptop in, plug a whatever you need to plug in. And it sits on the table and it doesn't look terrible. If people need to recharge their cell phones, they can do that with this sitting on the table. And you don't have this big blocky thing sitting on your, your kitchen table or your coffee table. So this is kind of nice, but it doesn't have the power output that this Blue Eddy does. And as you can see, this little space heater right here, a little, little cheap little space heater I got from Walmart. If I were to plug this in, this runs about 450 watts. And as you see, this will kick off. So it gets up to about 500 and then it gives an error because it's too many watts. So if we were to plug this into this Blue Eddy though, you could see this Blue Eddy will handle that wattage and it goes down to about 300 and then it will kick back up to about 400. So it will handle the wattage for this. As you can see though, it's only going to do it for about 0.8 hours, as it says right there. So something that takes this much wattage isn't really ideal 
uh, for these smaller type battery banks, which would mean you would go up to the larger ones. And even with the larger ones, I plug this into this one right here. So with this, this is 1200 watts and this will go up to a thousand watts output. So this is going to run this little space heater just fine. Turn on the AC and you'll see with something this size, the 1200, so four times the size of that one, you'll be able to run something like this a few hours. But again, still, you know, you, you may not want to use something that takes as much juice as this because you're, you're not going to have a way to recharge these. Now, along with these, even this 1200, Jackery's got some that are even larger. Blue Eddy's got some that they have the extra battery packs that you can add to them. You can get 30, 40,000 watt hours. Uh, it really just depends on how much money you want to spend. You've also got the the systems, the generators, and the systems that you can put in your home and tie it to your fuse box, which is what I'm going to go into in a little bit, what my plans are. But there are a lot of options. It really just depends on what you're preparing for and how much money and how much you're willing to invest in that. Now, another option that I've got that I want to show you before I get into the solar is if you don't want to go with the one of these power banks, you want to get yourself a Life PO4 battery. It's basically the same thing. These are just contained inside. I've also got a 20 amp hour battery that I put in my lights out kit, which has got a plug on it where I can, it's, it's not going to give me a lot of juice, but it'll help me get a little bit of light uh, and things like that. Those smaller things, but not as small as one of these. So sort of around the, the size of this is what the capabilities would be. But with these larger batteries, you could get an inverter. This is a 1500 watt inverter, which is going to run just about anything in the house and then a 100 amp hour battery right here. And all you do is you throw it on right here with these, you just put the positive and negative on, and then you're, you're good to go basically. And then you've also got another option. This is one that I keep in my car and in the garage, but you've got the alligator clips where you could just put the alligator clips on there. It's not going to be as efficient, but then you, you, have, the same, you have the same option. And then you have the cigarette lighter output. And this one right here is one I keep in my lights out kit. This is a 300 watt pure sine wave. And I've got the plug that I can plug it straight into that and have the inverter for that battery that I have in my lights out kit. But you're going to get the same type of output from a battery like this with this inverter hooked up right here. And you're going to be able to decide how much you want, how much you need, and you're gonna be able to change things rather than having something like this or that where you're kind of stuck with what it is. And when the battery inside these run out, although Life PO4 batteries have like four to 10,000 life cycles, when these run out, this whole unit is basically dead. Whereas when this runs out, and this isn't, this is one of the lower cost models, but when this runs out, I just replace the battery and then I'm good to go. And that is why I, I am putting together my DIY setup because I want to be able to expand and change pieces and parts out that I need to as I go. Now with all of these, like I said, you run something that has a large amount of wattage coming out, you're going to need a way to replenish that. And that's why all of these are so great as far as being able to attach solar to them. Now with a battery, you're going to need to do something like I did with my DIY setup. You're basically just going to need the battery, the inverter, and a charge controller, and the solar panels. This solar panel right here is a 100 watt solar panel. Uh, the collapsible solar panels outside in my yard, I have 200 watt solar panels. You've got the smaller ones like this Goal Zero right here, which you can put on a the back of a bug out bag or uh, you know, it, really nice and convenient because it can go anywhere. But you also have uh, solar panels about this size, which is 24 watts. And these are also portable, but not quite as portable. But you could still, you know, put that, take this camping, put it somewhere. And 24 watts is not a lot by any means. But if you are powering something like this little 300 watt. 24 watts in if if you got 24 watts consistently you're talking about you know a day maybe day a day or two to recharge this thing from zero with a 100 watt solar panel you're talking just a few hours 
uh, or 100 watt solar panels, you're talking three or four hours, you could recharge something like this or recharge something like that. So that would be really nice in a disaster or an emergency situation. These larger ones, it takes a whole lot more time. And that's why I have 200 watts of solar panels coming in the house. And I'm going to upgrade to 300 watts because I want to be able to replenish as much as possible. That, that way I can use as much as I need to use in a disaster or emergency situation. My goal is to be able to run my refrigerator, run my freezer, and a couple other things uh, nonstop in, a, in an emergency or whenever I need to. And right now I could run my, I've got a little chest freezer that takes about a third of, of my 100 amp hour battery. So it drains it to about, you know, 70%, 60, 65% in one day. And then it recharges in just a couple hours the next day. So I could run that 24-7 just on that solar setup. But I also want to be able to run the refrigerator, which runs about 500 watts. Uh, one of these would run, this would run a refrigerator for an hour or two if you just needed to keep it cool. And then recharge it, you know, during the day. If you got hundred, one of these foldable solar panels, 100 watts, you could recharge this in a few hours. And a couple times a day, you could just use this to keep your refrigerator running. This would be a better option for refrigerators, although you wouldn't want to do it 24-7. But when you think about all of these things, think about what they're going to be used for. Uh, that's why I wanted to go through these from the smallest to largest. What are you going to, you, you may need a few of these. These are a little bit dangerous because they get used quite a bit from family members. If you've got kids, you know they'll, they get lazy and don't want to plug their phone in. They'll just plug it in right here. And then it doesn't get recharged. And then when a disaster or emergency happens, this is totally drained. So you'd need that solar power to be able to power these up or have the one with the solar power on it. But there are a lot of different things and a lot of you can have a few of these. You can have one of these that will power the medium. Say you just need a few lights to in, in at night and you want to power some LED lights. This will run LED lights for a very long time. If you want something bigger, say you've got a hot plate or something, which would take up a whole lot of energy from this, you could run those bigger appliances. You could run your refrigerator with something like this. That 100 amp hour battery over there and that little inverter I had with the alligator clips, you can plug that, you could hook that up to your car battery and use that. So there are just so many different options that you can use, but we need to think about what we're going to, we need to sort of make a list of things that we need to, that we're going to want to power in a disaster or an emergency. And I think the refrigerator makes the, the top of my list. And then you've got light. You're going to need to be able to see things at night. Cooking, there are a few options. I've done a video on different cooking options that you can store some fuel. So you don't necessarily need to use all your energy on a hot plate. But think about all the different options you have. And that's why I said with my solar setup, my DIY setup, I'm putting that together to get to the point where I can put a transfer switch in or have an electrician put a transfer switch in, which is basically if the power goes out, I flip that transfer switch at the fuse box and it's got three different fuses on it. One for the well pump, one for a couple outlets inside, the refrigerator, some lights. And I can use the power from my, my battery bank to power those things. Now, I need to expand my battery bank a little bit more before I get to that point, but that is the goal. And that is why, even though it takes up a little bit more space, you can see with my battery bank, it takes up a little bit more space, it is something that I can expand and I can change the pieces out. Whereas one of these are fantastic, but you get what you get and there's not a lot of options afterwards. So maybe get one and then work on putting a, a battery bank together for yourself. Even if it's just like that for the time being, a 100 amp hour battery, an inverter, and maybe a charge controller and some solar panels. One last thing on, on this, I wanted to mention because it seems like with these small power banks, they can basically say whatever they want. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this says it's 40,000 milliamp hours. I've tested it and it's not. You can use something like this. It will test the capacity of this and how much something is drawing out. So if you plug it into this port right here, you'll see the readout on here will tell you, you click this to the to the right screen. Let's see, go through these. You don't necessarily need all those. 
what you need is this screen. It will tell you how many milliamp hours it's discharging. So you can charge this to 100% and then let it discharge completely and read how many milliamp hours this actually has. Like I said, this has got about, I can't remember, I think it's about 1500 milliamp hours. You can also, you can use this on these. These blue eddies are pretty accurate most of the time. This was pretty accurate when I tested it. And you can also test the AC side of it as well because the AC is not, it, even though this is 1200 watts or 1200 watt hours, 100 amp hours basically, the DC side, you're gonna get more energy than the AC side because the AC has an inverter in there which converts that DC energy into AC. And what you can do is plug something like this into it and you can test exactly how many watts you are getting from your system with something like this. So if we were to turn this on, let that initialize real quick, and you can see it will give us a reading about how many watts we're using, the energy, all the different, a lot of these that you won't even really need, but they are there for you. So you can test how many watts this is going to, how, many, how much energy you're gonna get from this at 500 watts or 300 watts. You can test how much energy you're gonna get from this at a lower wattage. So just test these different things and understand exactly what you have is the main point with this. Uh, but it's really important. One of these I think is like 15 bucks on Amazon and you can get it and test all these smaller power banks and make sure that you're actually getting what you're supposed to be getting out of these or what you can expect. So one of these is fantastic and even the AC one, they've got a few different kinds just to give you an idea about what you're using with these battery banks. But if you have any questions, that's it for today, everyone. If you do have any questions on any of these, anything that I didn't answer, I know this is a lot of stuff going on here. The different solar panels, the different size of power banks that you can get uh, and what you can charge and anything, the inverters, the DIY stuff. If you have any questions, make sure and leave a comment below and I'll answer them or, or possibly even do another video in the future. But with that, I am done here today. Take care and prepare everyone. We will talk to you all later.